Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Brian from Exact IT. How you doing today? Um, today we're going to talk about exploits and how hackers find targets and exploit them, um, making sure that you understand how companies are getting hacked today and why this stuff keeps happening is, I think, very important. Um, I think what I'm going to show you today highlights how uh, woefully poor a lot of companies security is. But before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody, we don't get paid for this channel. Uh, we don't do the Patreon thing and we don't get paid or we don't uh, run ads in the video or in the middle of the video. Um, obviously, except for the ones that YouTube puts in front of you, uh, but subscribe to YouTube Premium. It's pretty cool and you don't have to, to get ads. So that's what I do anyway. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's jump into the content. All right, so um, I'm going to link down below to a video that I did earlier in the year where I kind of took you through how hackers use a tool like the search engine Shodan to find targets. Now, um, a lot of people think that they are not a target. They are too small. Nobody cares about them. Um, and they think that that's kind of how it works. And hackers are out there looking to get the whales or the big fish and you know that's all they care about and they're not really going after the small guy so the small guy doesn't need to worry about um, security like the big big companies do and you know that's a huge huge misconception um, that's not at all how hackers hack hackers look for vulnerabilities they look for machines and computers and devices that are available to them through the internet or through other ways of connecting to them. And they see if they can exploit them. They don't care who owns them. They don't care who's behind them. That's what they figure out once they get access or they get access and they sell it to somebody who then tries to figure out who they have access to and then figure out how they can make money off of that. A lot of times, they might get in and they might find that they really don't have much, but they keep the, they keep the uh, persistent access or they keep the access or they don't, um, you know, they don't really give up on it um, because there might be something in the future that they could exploit down the road um, that couldn't lead to more money. So I'm going to show you kind of what the video today is to illustrate how easy this is and to show you that they don't target specific companies or individuals on the outset. They just target machines that are available to them and have the vulnerabilities that they need to then get inside of the network or further their access. Um, and then once they're in, then they figure out who they're dealing with. So um, up on my screen and there's, um, a couple of vulnerabilities that I want to highlight that Microsoft uh, in the last couple of years has, has put out some pretty uh, pretty important patches for and it's been out in the news it's been made public it's well known these 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 exploits and these patches are, are well known Microsoft has come out and said you need to patch your systems from from these vulnerabilities or you're going to get hacked or you're going to allow somebody to get into your system regardless if they have a good username or password or what have you. Um, so the first one I want to get into is um, one that we can find right on the, the search engine showdown. Now, search, the search engine showdown, typically you can go to it. It's a website you can go to, um, but you can also run it from a Linux uh, command line. And the Linux command line that you can run it from actually gives you a little bit more more depth of what you're what you're dealing with than the website does. Like for instance, on the website, you cannot scan for specific vulnerabilities, but using the Linux command line uh, API, you can. So in this case, we're looking for um, CVE-2019-078. 
uh, as you can see at the top of, of the uh, screen here. Um, and really the, the uh, 078 is um, the uh, blue keep vulnerability. So 078 is a, 0708 is the blue keep vulnerability. Um, Microsoft has released um, uh, guidance on this that it needs to be patched uh, at, or you're facing uh, the chance of a hacker exploiting this. Now, this shows you at the number 452225, there's about 452,000 computers that are connected to the internet right now with no security in front of it that are vulnerable to the blue keep vulnerability. Um, as you can see, a lot of them are in China. The rest of them are in the U.S. Um, but this uh, vulnerability, um, a patch has come out for this. for a, It's been out for a very long time. The administrators that are responsible for these computers are not patching these systems, and they're leaving them out there exposed to be hacked. So when companies or people wonder why they're getting hacked or why all these hacks are happening, this is why. This is exactly why right here. There is absolutely no reason why these machines should not be patched from these vulnerabilities. Yet, here we are today and they have them. And, it, and as you can see, you do a facet on the organization. It's the second part of this, this screenshot here. Um, Tencent cloud, ten, Tencent cloud Computing, Korea Telecom China, Amazon.com. So a lot of the big Chinese hosting providers and Amazon, a big US hosting providers, are who has these vulnerabilities. Now, if you look, Amazon has about 12,000 of them, but there's 52,000 in the US. So that leaves about 40,000 machines that aren't on Amazon. Where are they? They're probably with, you know, they could be with Microsoft Azure. They could be with, you know, on Google Cloud. They could be in people's own buildings and their in their in their companies. Um, and you know, who's who's doing this for you? Who's checking to make sure that these vulnerabilities don't exist? And if you're a CEO, or you own a company. Um, who's having a conversation with you to make sure that you're uh, confident enough that you don't have a machine out on the internet with, uh, you know, a vulnerability like this. So, um, you know, it begs the question as to who's, you know, doing the security for these companies and what they're they're actually they're actually doing. And that was for the Blue Keep, which is a more recent vulnerability. Let's talk about Eternal Blue, which was used to deploy WannaCry around the world. And just a shot of this. There's 15,745 computers with Eternal Blue uh, exploits uh, still available. A lot of them are in Russia, but here we go. R United States again in second place. Taiwan, India, United Arab, uh, Arab Emirates. You see, we looked at the asset, uh, the facet in the second part of here, and you can see the hosting providers. Amazon's one of the, the top uh, uh firms uh, or, or hosting providers that host these servers that have these exploits still uh, in them. So, you know, if you have an Amazon web server, an AWS EC2 or something like that, and you're not securing it properly, you're leaving um, these ports open and then the ports are open and then a tool like this can determine whether or not you have uh, Blue Keep or Eternal Blue or any other exploit that exists uh, on a Microsoft Windows system. Um, and it just doesn't apply to Windows systems. It applies to every device that connects out there. Um, firewalls, switches, Linux machines, Mac machines. They all receive updates and most of these updates are released because it's patching a security hole within that product. So uh, th this was, uh, this patch was deployed well over uh, a year ago, going on two years, and um, it's MS17-010 is the uh, is the patch and the vulnerability that Microsoft identified, and uh, it, it's still out there. And you know, just just to kind of highlight even more, um, you know, we have 
I'm going to try to pull up the... No, we don't want that one. We want this one. Um, 3389. This screenshot here. Shodan port sets. If you, if you query uh, Shodan using this same tool on which port um, 3389, which is the standard port from a remote desktop, which Microsoft has put out guidance saying do not expose this port to the internet. Um, quite frankly, in my opinion, you should just turn it off completely. Um, there's really no need to leave 3389 wide open at all times for somebody just to use and, and get into a system. It's how you can remote into a computer using Microsoft's built-in remote access tool called Remote Desktop. Um, and as you can see, there's there's well over 4 million uh, computers that have four, 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 or 3389 open. In the United States alone, there's 2.3 million. In China, there's 1.1 million, and it goes down from there. You can see the organizations, Google Cloud, Tencent Cloud Computing, Microsoft Azure, Amazon.com. System administrators are required to do the security when they have these cloud servers running in Microsoft, Google, or Amazon. They don't provide the security or they don't provide the configuration to secure these devices. They give you the infrastructure. It's on you to you know, secure these and make sure you don't have these ports open and this level of access open. You should always be running independent tools or independent audits on your systems to make sure that you don't have things exposed. Even if you don't think you have them exposed, you still need to run the tools to make sure that somebody along the way didn't open something up for some particular reason and then forgot to shut it down or whatever whatever you had. We've seen crazy things happen in, in this world where you have network administrators that do things you know to test really quickly and then something you know they, they're, they're doing something they open 3389 for whatever reason to, to test something out but their intention was to close it when they were done then they get a phone call and that phone call distracts them and you know they take that phone call and they never go back to thinking about closing that port and making sure it's not accessible anymore and then that's how a um you know a person that runs your network can cause an unattended vulnerability or an unattended attack against your company. So it's important that you're constantly running and checking to make sure that your rules that you have in place for blocking access or allowing access are what you expect them to be. So, um, you know, to break this down for you, if you're a CEO, if you're a layman, and you really don't understand this geeky stuff that I, that I got into today, the bottom line is, is somebody should be responsible for this on your network. They should be able to come, you should be able to ask them or they should be able to come to you and provide you with the evidence that this stuff isn't going on with your equipment, with your network, with your devices and run multiple tools against your system. Don't just rely on one tool to protect your systems. Make sure you're running multiple tools to, to ensure that you are not running the risk of that tool giving you a false negative or false positive. For instance, we, we can run a set of tools and then we also can run something like a Shodan where they have a monitor built into their website which can monitor specific IP addresses or domains. And we also run on um, industry recognized tools uh, to further ensure that the information we're getting from either Shodan or from the tools match up because if Shodan sees or doesn't see something and our tool doesn't see or see something, you would hope that that would match up and that gives you verification that your configuration is as it should be. So um, CEOs out there, ask your network administrator, ask your IT provider, ask the person who's responsible for your IT security, uh, give me a report on our, our IP address from an external view. What can hackers see um, about our company's IP address or IP addresses or the servers that we have or our cloud infrastructure? Um, if they're doing this regularly, it should be no big deal for them to provide uh, any CEO or executives 
with these with this information and these reports to provide you with the peace of mind that you're not one of the four million computers that has one of these vulnerabilities open. So uh, check out the video I'm linking to below. Um, that'll give you a really good idea of how hackers kind of go through the process of finding servers, identifying people. I actually go through the video and I find a target and I find the company and then I, f I look at the username that's on the computer screen and I go on LinkedIn and I look for that person and I find that person. Um, so that's the, uh, and I do it in about five minutes. So I just kind of want to show you, uh, I think it's a good idea you watch that video so you can see how quickly a hacker can go from not knowing who their target is to knowing exactly who they're dealing with. And, and basically once I know I got them on LinkedIn, I can message them on LinkedIn. I can get their email. I can start emailing them and sending them phishing emails and try to get them to maybe go to a fake website and type in a password. And once they tr they type in that password, then I start using that password or, or close variations to that password to then get into the server that I know I have access to. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you found this informative and enlightening. Um, this is how hackers do things. I wanted to bring this to you uh, to show you how easy it is for hackers to target computers that are just sitting out there, uh, flapping in the wind on the internet. So have a great one, folks. We'll talk soon. Take care.